Morning, everybody. We'll give Facebook a few minutes to get caught up and let everybody know that I'm on live as I get ready. Oops. There we go. We've got a lot to do today, so I'm going to get right into it. How is everybody? I got some stuff to show you. Are you guys doing uh, Hoop Sisters Mystery Quilt? It's fun. It's lots and lots of fun. Tell you. I was here until nine o'clock playing with the blocks. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. Cause I haven't decided yet. But I'll show you first off, look at June's fill in the bank blank by Kimber Bell. Isn't that adorable? And you get two uh, body suits with this month's blanks. So if you do the gray bodysuit, it'll be red. If you do the uh, peach or pink blush is what they call it, bodysuit, it'll be white here. Or I think it'll be white here. I don't know, either way, it's white here, I believe. I don't know, I'm more confused. Anyway, they're already on the website for purchase. They're super cute. And then this is what I worked on last night. I think I have decided to do all of the hearts in different colors. So I'll probably do a light teal one or um, I don't know, I come up with another color, maybe a blue one. We'll switch the colors out a little bit. So I think maybe the next one will be this color in the hearts and this color in the hearts. I like it. I was having fun. And I did something different that um, Hoop Sisters didn't do is I put the back on it so that it's quilted through. Um, and I'll be doing a video for this this week. I just haven't decided exactly when yet because Wednesday is, is the day I normally do it and we're doing make the cut. So I have to figure out it's gonna be the one of these mornings or um, a late evening when I close. Okay, let's get into it. Morning, Susan. All right, so this is our block uh, 35. I've already done the half square triangles because I've done it a lot and um, you guys should know it by now. So all I'm gonna do is do some chain piecing to piece, piece these little four patches together. I was here late last night. <laughs> At the same time, I'm working on row by row. It's just been crazy. There's so much going on. I don't know where to start or stop. It's just been really, really busy. And I'm hoping they're working on the roof, so I'm hoping they don't get too loud while we're doing the video. Because they were kind of loud a little bit earlier, so that's why I'm late. Um, kind of hard to do a video if you got banging overhead. All right. Let me just iron these real quick. Thank you. 
I am using a scant quarter of an inch on these little four patches because they are just so small. Um, I may have to cut the blocks or trim the blocks up once I'm done. Because I am using a scant quarter of an inch, so they'll probably be bigger than I need to. So now I'm going to continue with that chain piecing for the other part of the four patch. Yeah, I was here quite late last night, but I didn't want to go home because I was having fun. And I was doing it on the small machine, but I think I'm going to do the rest of them on the larger machine. So they'll go even faster as far as the hoop sisters. And I think I'm gonna do a little video for the kabloom. I mean, uh, not the kabloom, the uh, Main Street Celebration bench pillow because I think I'm gonna be working on that. I don't know if I'm gonna do a live video, more probably a um, recorded video just because I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna be working on it during the day while I'm open. So I don't want to have a bunch of dead space. And when I stop, that way I can keep the video condensed and clean. And it'll be fun, especially since I have all of the fabric now for it. I only have, I think, maybe two or three more kits left of the. Uh, fabric. All right, now this is going to be easy peasy. Yes, that's right. There we go. Now we're just going to have to put the little four patches together and we're going to chain piece those again. Um, pretty simply, I will put a pin in here because I want to make sure that my seam stays put where I've set it up. Stop where the pin is and not so over the pin. So what are you guys working on? Anything good? I'm working on way too much, much more than I thought possible. It's kind of crazy.
No, I didn't mean to cut it. Oh, well. No. Let's try it again. One more, and then we can get these block together. We have one more four patch here. Just got to iron our knees and we'll be ready to put the block together. There aren't going to be a lot of matching seams at this point. Um, there was with the four patches, but now not so much. Let's iron this, sew this just a little bit more. All right, now there we go. So now we're just going to sew it together just like any normal nine patch. Once you've made them, all the pieces, pretty simple. And again, I am chain piecing. Chain piecing doesn't save a ton of time, but it does over time. It saves me a lot more aggravation because of the type of machine that I have. And it has a tendency, I have a brother, baby locks are kind of the same way. They have a tendency to want to suck the beginning of the fabric into the machine plate and by chain piecing that kind of helps that process so it doesn't happen as often as i've told you before um i don't normally cut the door gears off that is I'm gonna show you what i mean i find keeping the door gears on help me with piecing lining up and they give me just that little bit of fabric. See that doggy right there? That gives me just that little bit of fabric to go into the machine as a start. Plus usually where it meets the fabric here with this angle, it is a perfect bullseye for where I should be aiming towards. And I'm sewing to get everything lined up. All right, now all we have to do, and let me make sure I get these going the right way.
Now all I have to do is sew the final part of the rows on. And then we can sew the rows together and get on to the next block. The next block we're going to be using flying geese. And it should go pretty fast. Almost done. Just gotta iron these pieces over. All right. Here you go. Now we're just going to sew our rows together. And I will pin my seams. There's one. Now we're going to put the final one on. And then we're on to the next block. There we go. Doesn't it look nice? All lined up, pretty pretty. All right, let's get ready for this next one, which I've already started. I've done half of the flying geese, which you start with a rectangle, and then you've got a square that you put on one side, and then we put line up this one on the other square on the other side. And you sew just on that line, maybe a hair or a thread length, thread width on this side of the line. And when you fold it over, you have your flying geese. Now, I will tell you, I tend to start on the same side of the block every time. 
uh, I mean, the same slide of the, the flying geese, because I find it, you can sometimes, um, if you flip back and forth, sometimes that's just enough of a distraction when the quilt is done and the blocks are done that you can actually see it and it shows up more than you want it to. So the first one I did would draw a line, but as I've done before, I'm not gonna draw a line on the others. I did that so that you could actually see what I was stitching. Um, I'm gonna use my grid guide mat. By lining up the point here and the point uh, at the needle, I will be able to sew in a nice straight line. All right. There you go. Make sure when you start your flying geese and you sew your first square on, make sure you iron it all completely before you start your second part so that they will be nice and flat up here at the point. And I always iron my triangle over. Make sure everything is good before I cut excess bulk. There they are. Now I just got to cut the bulk, and I just do this with a scissor, eyeballing it. Cut about a quarter of an inch from the stitch line just to get rid of some bulk. All right, now this is going down. And let's see, so we've got them so that they're going every other. I'm gonna sew these together and then I'm gonna sew these together. Now, here is an important step that, or an important tip to make sure that you never cut off the point on your flying geese. There is a, a crisscross stitch line right here. When you stitch, make sure you do not cross on that side of that X. Make sure you're on this side of the X and guess what? You won't cut off your points. Always make sure this one is on top so that I can see it. There you go. I have my points. All right, now I'm going to do this one. And again, I've got the back of the one with the point that I can see on top. I lift up my foot to make sure my seams stay where I want them to.
And as you can see, I did not go over the crisscross. So I have my points still intact. We iron this, and then we'll get ready for the final portion of this block. And now we're just gonna do the other half of the block. To just iron these tips. Done. All right. There we go. So these together, then we'll sew the two halves together, and we will be done for this week. One more press. Ready to sew the two halves together. Here we go. The nice thing about this quilt is as long as your colored pieces line up, the rest of it really doesn't matter too much. And you can have some fun on some simple blocks. There you go. You can have fun on some simple blocks that will increase your skill. Ooh, you know what? All right, I'm gonna have to redo that one because I put this on the wrong side. It's gonna go on the other side, but oh, that's what happens. 
I've done it a few times, especially when I did the whole quilt. But you get the gist. I hope you guys have a great day. You know where I am if you need me. And if you have any questions whatsoever, you can post them on the group page under each video. And I would gladly answer your questions. Um, look out for the video that I'm going to prepare for um, Kimber Bell's uh, Main Street Celebration Bench Pillow. Because I'm going to start working on that. And I will post the videos after as they're done. Have a great day, everybody.